The next item of business today is the Members' Business Debate on Motion Number 10661 in the name of James Dornan on celebrating Glasgow, the caring city. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons now. I would also be grateful if guests leaving the chamber in the gallery could do so quietly. This parliament is still in session. Thank you. I call on James Dornan to open the debate. Mr Dornan, seven minutes, please. Thank you, presiding officer. Uh, this debate is a very important one to me, and I could actually speak on it for half an hour. You'll be delighted to know that I won't. I'll, I'll try and stick to the seven minutes. But uh, Glasgow the Caring City, and before I start, I'd like to welcome the, the Reverend Neil Gilbraith, who's the founder of Glasgow the Caring City, to the chamber this afternoon. Uh, many of you all know Neil. He's uh, been tireless in his work, both across the city of Glasgow and further afield. Uh, he's a minister for the Cartrell Parish Church. He works as a police chaplain and works with veterans, particularly with his coming home project that is run from the church. Now, the, the minister, Keith Brown, has been out before the coming home project started, which is for veterans who find it difficult to uh, reintegrate into society. It's a place for them to go. It's a place for them to meet their peers. And it's, it's now becoming a place for them to move on, uh, get jobs and, and move back into society. And it, it's fairly invaluable. I was speaking to just a couple of them the other day. Uh, but for many, he'll be known as the founder of Glasgow The Caring City and the, the charity that I'm delighted we're recognising in the Parliament today. It was founded in May 1999 as Glasgow's very own aid agency. It was originally set up to help those who were made homeless by the wars that were raging across the Balkans. The same was to help as many of the thousands of asylum seekers and refugees that were arriving in Glasgow at that time as it could. At its core, its central aim is to provide care, help and love to the most fragile and destitute children, both at home and abroad. It's a name that the charity has been tirelessly working towards for the past 15 years. Glasgow The Caring City now works with a number of projects across the world to provide help and support, both locally and internationally, as well as providing emergency relief where it can. The first of these is education, which is a key part of the Caring City's development strategy. As the late, great Nelson Mandela once said, education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. And The Caring City have taken that mantra to heart. At home, they've been working on their Give a Kid a Goal project for the last couple of years. It started as a way to encourage P6s and 7s to think in a different way about the issues that were closest to them and has grown into a much bigger project that gets kids involved, both in their local community, by organising or taking part in a community event or taking part in a youth organisation, to perhaps finding out a wee bit more about the history of people or by getting involved in a local campaign. It also helps foster links with children worldwide, including by supporting the work of an international charity, gathering resources to be sent, or even just taking the time to learn about what life can be like for the children in different parts of the world. Caring City are clear that they want to ensure that their projects work towards becoming self-sufficient, that they're providing help and expertise in education as the initial setup, but the end game for them is to empower local communities across the world to make the decisions about what is best for their school or college. It's fantastic to see their vision in action in the many projects that I've visited that they've been involved in. I've also been fortunate to travel abroad to see some of the great work that they were doing in Uganda and, and South Sudan, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. As mentioned, they also do a lot of work in disaster relief around their key themes. In education, it's by assisting in rebuilding schools that have been destroyed by natural disasters, such as floods or earthquakes. This was clear with the support they gave to the people of Sit Salil in Haiti to rebuild their school after the devastating earthquake there in 2010. Another theme to their work is security. Glasgow Caring City is, I believe, one of the best examples of a charity that sees security not only as physical security from harm, but also what can be seen as human security. The belief that being secure is more than just having police and an army, but the security also comes by having easy access to food and water, having a secure job, home, relationships and family life. Human security was at the heart of their work in the post-tsunami Sri Lanka, where the Caring City invested in medium to long-term projects in the fishing and hospitality industry, which became self-sustainable. This has meant that the community could start to build a better future for themselves out of the horrors of that fateful Boxing Day. It was also apparent in their work in South Sudan at Matthew's Farm, which helps young men and women become farmers and teaches them the skills that they need to farm land as well as to read write and do basic maths. And I had the pleasure of, of visiting uh, Matthew's Farm, which was funded by Roscoe Braith, who I want to give a special mention to as well. He's the International Development Officer for the Caring City. And uh, he has seen Matthew's Farm growing 
from being just a patch of land to being a sustainable farm where the, 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 the people who use it can now take their goods, grow their goods, take them to the market, sell them at the market, feed their families based on what they get from, from starting to grow these. And that was not the case before. And it's, it's made a huge difference. I spoke to a number of people who have benefited from, benefited from it, and it was just fantastic to see. Closer to home, the Sofa Cycle Initiative, which makes use of recycled furnishings and white goods to give to people across Glasgow who might just need a helping hand to help make their home life more secure. Under the health banner, the Caring City has done some great work, particularly around the beautiful game. When I was in Uganda, I watched a football match between some local children who were all wearing Scotland strips, donated by Scotland's captain, Darren Fletcher. A great initiative and one that I hope gets continued support. Design officer, I've only scratched the surface of the many great projects that the Caring City have worked on or are working on at the moment. It's fair to say their work has had a huge impact both at home and across the world. I've been fortunate to see firsthand a lot of the work that they're doing in my constituency and in Glasgow, as well as further afield, as I've just mentioned. And they're a brilliant example of the sort of work that epitomises the Glasgow spirit. I've spoken about the brilliant Celebration City Festival in the previous debates uh, which, uh, during the Commonwealth Games, which showed the city at its best. I am proud, uh, this comes as no surprise to anybody in this chamber, I'm proud of, of my constituency and I think there are lots of great things going on in, constituency, in my constituency and I could bore you to death with all the, uh, the examples that I have. But I have to say that there won't be many better that shows my constituency and in my view the city of Glasgow and the country of Scotland uh, in a better light than uh, Glasgow the Caring City. I've, I know they've done great work over the, 15, the last 15 years and I look forward to the work that they're going to do over the next 15 years. I know the Minister's visited them before and he has a close relationship with them and I'm sure he'll have some kind words to say about them. But I just want to put on the record how delighted I am that they're there for all the people that they help and also the fact that they're based in my constituency of Glasgow Kitkat. And I want to once again thank the Reverend Neil Gobraith and the others for all the work they do. Thank you. Many thanks. We now turn to the open debate speeches of four minutes, please. Mary Scanlon to be followed by Hans Alamalik. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I, I welcome this member's debate, not only as an opportunity to celebrate the 15th birthday of Glasgow, the caring city, but as a chance to highlight its achievements and to raise its profile. And I would like to thank James Dornan for securing time in the Chamber for us to discuss this motion. It's exactly the type of motion that members' business was designed for. Uh, as a spokesman for education and lifelong learning, many of the projects supported by Glasgow The Caring City resonate with myself, uh, such as projects involving the Aikota School in southern Sudan and the Himbazi School in Burundi, as mentioned by James Dornan. We regularly debate uh, issues relating to education in this uh, chamber, uh, but we often fail to consider just how fortunate we really are with university opportunities for education from preschool all the way to university, giving Scottish children, male and female, the chance to discover and realise their own potential. And this is not the case in some parts of the world, so I'm proud to see charities such as Glasgow The Caring City working in countries like Burundi and southern Sudan to help deliver education opportunities to those who need it most. I may be old-fashioned, but I've always believed that access to education and training is one, not the only route, but it is one route out of poverty. Uh, I also praise the charities uh, Give a Kid a Goal campaign, which encourages children in Glasgow to fundraise for the Himbazi School Project. This not only makes these children more aware of the world around them, but demonstrates just how fortunate they are to have a good education and economic security and more, as James has outlined, and quite often issues that we can take for granted. The projects supported by the charity in Malawi, such as the David Livingston Clinic, are a reflection of the special partnership between Malawi and Scotland, founded in 2006, uh, this clinic provides training facilities for student nurses and primary care to mother and babies. And we have debated the dire circumstances of maternity care and the effects on mother and child in this chamber in the past. And if I may say, Deputy Presiding Officer, I do remember your input in, and concern into many of these debates. Uh, another Scottish charity, Project Trust, sends around 
10, 17 to 19 year olds uh, across five projects to Malawi each year on 12 month placements and it's also a member of the Scottish Malawi Partnership and has contributed to teaching and social care in the country for many years. So as well as sending up to 300 young people to 20 other countries each year, Project Trust is another great example of young Scots and other nationalities striving to make a difference to those who are less fortunate, and we should all be very proud of them. Glasgow, the caring city, not only carries abroad the great name of Glasgow, I cannot claim to be a representative or a resident of Glasgow as a Highlands and Islands MSP, but I do recognise good work when it's being done. But Glasgow, the caring city, is an ambassador for Scotland and the United Kingdom, demonstrating our compassion and outward-looking vision. The United Kingdom has the second largest aid budget in the world for international development and is in fact the only country in the G8 to meet and regularly meet its aid target. And on top of this, Scotland contributes an additional £9 million through its International Development Fund towards projects in Malawi such as the David Livingston Clinic, in addition to Glasgow, the Caring City, which was one of the first Malawi Millennium projects. Uh, I'll just finish there as I see my time is coming to an end. But uh, just to say through the work of uh, charities such as Glasgow, the Caring City and many others such as Mary, Mary's Meals, Scotland has demonstrated that it can and will continue to make an impact on the international stage. So I wish Glasgow, the caring city, a happy anniversary and continued success in its charitable efforts. I praise the work of Neil Galbraith and thank James Dornan for bringing this debate to the Parliament. Many thanks. We have a little bit of leeway with time this afternoon. Hans Alamalik to be followed by Linda Fabiani. Uh, thank you very much and good afternoon, Presiding Officer. First of all, please allow me to thank James Dornman for raising the motion celebrating the 15th birthday of Glasgow, the Caring City, and of course, uh, Reverend Neil Galbraith, who I have known for many years. Um, I'm very pleased. Um, I mean, James Dornman went on to advise us and inform us that uh, the charity is based in his ward, uh, as it is in my regional area as well. Uh, I've had the privilege of traveling with Neil Galbraith in a number of countries pursuing uh, giving and, and carrying out charity throughout the world. Throughout this period, the charity has supported a range of health, education, security programs worldwide, whilst most important, uh, most uh, prominent examples for the charity influenced includes funding of schools around the world. And I would like to cite one or two examples of how the Glasgow, um, the Caring City has, has carried out that work is indeed a, um, a caring city, a, a, a charity that cares. Uh, it works throughout the world in many countries. And just to give you a flavor of the countries that it has engaged in, to my knowledge, um, um, is Cuba, India, Pakistan, Sudan, uh, Uganda, um, Scotland. Um, and to give you just two sites in Scotland, and uh, one was the, the, the disaster we had in Fur Hill when the factory uh, exploded and also at the airport where blankets and water was provided instantaneously uh, and a lot of hard work was done by volunteers. And other examples are like helping schools in Glasgow, for example, in Hillhead, Hillhead where I was a counselor, and uh, the, the secondary school was assisted in funding to support his twinning with the Lahore School in Pakistan and also countries like Malawi and Sri Lanka, particularly when the tsunami took place um, and may I also go on to say that uh, we see the practical results of this type of work around the world, uh, and that is that when I had the, the privilege of going to Sri Lanka during the Commonwealth Games, one of the things the Sri Lankan community were very uh, proud to say was that the new Scotland and the new Glasgow, because of the work and the charity work we did for them, they didn't know uh, in, um, Nigeria because they were nowhere near to be seen. Now, I'm sure Nigerian people did support them. I'm, I'm not sure to what extent, but they certainly remembered the work that the Caring City did, and that's uh, a tribute to uh, Neil Gilbraith as well, because uh, he was very active and worked very hard out there. In fact, I was concerned about his health when I saw him, uh, because I felt he was overdoing it. But that's the nature of uh, the business that he's in. 
Uh, another, there are other examples of charities in Glasgow which do a tremendous amount of work uh, around the world for us. UCARE is, is, is one example who fund schools uh, around the world. Also, uh, charities like the Islamic Relief, uh, which is renowned for its work around the world and has been supported by Scottish Government on occasion in regards to supporting help rebuild schools, refurbish schools, stock equipment um, to bring uh, children the, the quality of education that they deserve. And that's something that's to be congratulated. Uh, Islamic Relief also operates in uh, other areas as well, and more recently in Afghanistan and Iraq, which is a, a very troubled part of the world. And I think our charities do a tremendous amount of work, and I'm, I'm really, really very proud of the work that our charities do. But going back to um, Glasgow, the Caring City, I mean, one of the interesting bits that I can tell you today is that they also worked with 1122, which is Fire and Rescue Services in Punjab, which was twinned with Fire and Rescue Service in Strathclyde, uh, in terms of delivering fire engines from Glasgow to Lahore, uh, which, which contributed immensely in saving life and limb uh, and property. And I think, you know, these, these small measures uh, go a very long way in, in supporting people. And I think that people appreciate the support and help people get from around the world. And I think that, you know, when I first uh, realized it was the 15th birthday of Glasgow, the Caring City, and we were going to have a motion in, in the parliament, I was pleased. Uh, it brought a smile to my face because I, I genuinely felt that we don't do enough thank yous around the world, and we don't do enough thank yous to the volunteers and the donors who make it possible to support people at very short notices. And I think I would really want to take a, a, an opportunity, presiding officer, to say it here today in public, that we really want to give a very huge thank you to all the industry and businesses, the private and the volunteers, the individuals who make an immense contribution uh, to the charity and charity movement in Scotland, which makes it help us make a success around the world, and it makes it matter. And I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. And once again, I not only congratulate the, the Glasgow Caring City, but also Neil Grabeth for all his hard work, and I hope and pray he will continue to do so in the future. Thank you very much. Many thanks. And I now call Linda Fabiani. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. It was interesting. Uh, that James Dornan said he could speak for half an hour about this, and I'm sure that Hansala Malik could speak for probably double that as well. But that's just a mark of, of how much uh, Glasgow, the caring city, has achieved in the 15 years since it was set up. And may I say happy birthday and thank you to Glasgow, the caring city, Neil Cobraith and his team, everyone uh, who's involved in it. Um, and may I say not least the the ladies in Cathcart Parish Church who always make great cakes when you go along for events. Um, I, I'm fascinated um, by the work Glasgow the Caring City does. It's the depth and breadth of that work that, that I find to be quite amazing because even having listened to three contributions already, I'm still thinking of, of other things that Glasgow the Caring City has been involved in, like that wonderful link with the New York firefighters, for example. And I remember attending a, a very moving service at Cathcart Parish Church in honour of the victims of 9-11. I was interested too to hear that James Dornan and Salah Malik have travelled to various places in the world um, with Glasgow the Caring City. I must be doing something wrong because the furthest I've ever got is East Kilbride. <laughs> but... Uh, I, I mention East Kilbride for a reason, it's, it's my constituency, but also um, to make it quite clear that Glasgow the Caring City does do work at home out with uh, Glasgow the city itself, because it's that kind of charity. Wherever there is felt to be a need, you will find Glasgow the Caring City. And one thing that I have been um, involved with in East Kilbride is the Give a Kid a Goal project which I just find very, very uplifting. And both Hunter Primary School in EK, as well as St Vincent's Primary School in EK, have been involved with that. And their head teachers are to be commended uh, to have realised the value of the Give a Kid a Goal project. Because what it does is it, it makes quite normal and quite natural that children work towards goals themselves whilst recognising that they should work towards these goals for children in other parts of the world too. And too often, 
Um, you know, we hear phrases like um, charity begins at home. But do you know what? What Glasgow the Caring City does is makes it quite plain that charity may well begin at home, but it certainly shouldn't end there because we are all uh, one big global family. I feel that's what's so very precious about them. It's the imparting of that to young people and making it fun. Now, I certainly, it's a long, long time ago that I was at primary school, um, and I, I'll accept the minister from this, but I think just about everyone else on the floor of the chamber here would recognise that when uh, the teacher ever said, or oh, the reverend from the local church or, or the priest um, from the local RC church is coming along, you were like, oh, no. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll tell you what, in the schools in East Kilbride, if you say the Reverend Neil Gabraith's coming along, they're like, yahoo, this is wonderful. We're going to have a great time. And it does raise their self-esteem too. Um, the other thing that, that hasn't been mentioned today is the Cross Out Child Poverty um, initiative that has been started and carried through by Glasgow, the Caring City. And this is something that I want to extend to East Kilbride as well. Um, and I have to, hands up here, been quite lax in so doing, but that's a project that's ongoing. But again, it's a recognition that we have to work across borders and across boundaries. Because yes, there is a absolute poverty in other parts of the world um, that should be addressed, we should be raising awareness of. But there's relative poverty in our own country, in our own cities, in our own satellite towns, in our rural areas. And we have to recognise that as well. And if we're truly talking about successful cities, successful towns, successful nation, and then extending that across the world, we have to recognise that we're all in it together. I think that's what Glasgow the Caring City does in a wonderfully non-judgmental way that we can all learn lessons from. And I'm delighted today uh, to be recognising that 15th anniversary and I don't just wish them a further 15 years, but way beyond that. Thank you. Many thanks. I now invite Hamza Yusuf to respond to the debate minister in around seven minutes or so, please. Uh, thank you, presiding officer. It's a privilege uh, for me to close this debate on behalf of the Scottish Government and also as a proud uh, Glaswegian. I thank James Dornan for securing this uh, precious parliamentary time. I fully endorse uh, the motion and join with others across the chamber and complimenting Glasgow, the caring city for the excellent work that they've been involved in, uh, both in Glasgow and overseas over the last uh, 15 years and congratulate them on that 15th year birthday. And two, let me add my um, compliments and, uh, and, and real regard uh, for Neil, Reverend Neil Galbraith uh, personally as well. It's a testament that everybody in this chamber, everybody across the political parties uh, speak so highly of him, but also know him uh, as an individual, he is one of those uh, forces of nature uh, that is very difficult to say no to, uh, somewhat, sometimes even suddenly, annoyingly, uh, unable to say no to him. Uh, some excellent uh, uh, speeches across uh, the chamber, though I fear uh, uh, Linda Fabiani may have got herself into trouble from our local priest or uh, minister, but nonetheless, good contributions, all reflecting on uh, great facets and strands of the work that's being done by Glasgow, the Caring City, and too many uh, to, to, to mention. Uh, you know, I was reflecting while the, the discussion was going on in the chamber that um, there's two favourite parts that I had to the Commonwealth Games opening ceremony. And um, one I think universally we all enjoyed was the UNICEF moment, that point where uh, we showed off Glasgow as the caring city and Scotland as the caring nation. Um, and making that opening ceremony the very first opening ceremony in the Commonwealth Games ever uh, to raise money for orphans across the world. The second one, the, the second favourite moment of mine's was the South African singer Pumeza singing Freedom Kamoyi. And uh, taking freedom uh, away from just the traditional sense of what it might mean, what I liked about that was that it encompasses everybody, that all ye uh, stance, uh, that freedom from poverty, freedom from deprivation, freedom from social stigma, uh, freedom uh, from having your life opportunities uh, hindered. Uh, freedom for all ye, if that just doesn't just mean for Scottish children, for Glaswegians, but also for those across the world. And if ever there's a, a charity, an NGO that sums it up, then it has to be Glasgow, uh, the caring city for the work that they do here domestically uh, in Scotland, but also uh, overseas. And there's very few organisations that I know that manage to do both uh, with the success that Glasgow, the caring city uh, does. 
Many of the projects uh, have been mentioned, Presiding Officer. I too want to give a, a mention uh, to their training programme. I think it's a great example uh, of their work in facilitating training opportunities for young adults and empowering people to make the most of the skills that they have. The, the Give a Kid uh, a Goal campaign is another example of empowering work, this time in helping our school children gain a greater understanding of their place in the world and how they can make a difference in tackling the challenges faced by our planet. And, and that ambition to help our young people to become fully global citizens is something the Scottish Government absolutely fully endorses. It's a key part of our curriculum for excellence. Uh, and last year, uh, myself and the Cabinet Secretary for Education, we uh, jointly announced uh, funding for six development education centres to work with our young people uh, in Scotland uh, round the ethos, actually, of that Give a Kid uh, a Goal campaign to, to empower them and uh, to give them the knowledge of the world that we live in to ensure that they gain an appreciation of the difference uh, that they can make. And that is hugely important in a world where people are cynical, as Linda Fabiani mentioned, cynical about giving money overseas and why do we do it and charity begins at home, uh, etc. Et and in, days, uh, in, in this day and age, uh, when finances are tough, uh, we're in difficult economic times, then we have a, a, a real uh, obligation to ensure that our children uh, are educated and understand the responsibility that they have as individuals, uh, as global citizens. Uh, when it comes to demonstrating partnership work, something the government's always keen uh, to highlight, then uh, there's great examples that are provided by Glasgow, the caring city. I think about their superb contribution to the Celebration City Festival during the Commonwealth Games. That phrase uh, that was employed throughout the Games, uh, people make Glasgow, uh, one of the great slogans uh, that was used throughout the Games, um, the Gla Glasgow, the caring city, helps demonstrate this uh, through the work that they did in working with 40 other partners, 40 other partners, to showcase the very best of Glasgow hospitality uh, throughout what was a superb cultural programme and activities uh, throughout the Games, attended by over 10,000 uh, people. So some of the work that they're doing domestically uh, is there uh, on the record. Uh, that but also brings me to looking at some of their overseas work uh, as well that they've been involved in over the last 15 years. Much of that has been mentioned. Uh, Hanzala Malik uh, mentioning the genesis of that at uh, the time of the, the Balkans uh, conflict. Uh, the motion, though quite rightly, also uh, recognises the support that's been given to Hambaza School in Burundi. Uh, that's just a flavour of the work. Uh, they're doing work in South Sudan, uh, Malawi, uh, Uganda and throughout the developing world. I was interested to hear uh, from James Dornan about his own trip and I remember reading uh, some of the articles that he wrote on his return uh, from uh, Uganda, from South Sudan. And uh, I'm very pleased that uh, he got to see the football game uh, as well. I'm pleased he wasn't playing, otherwise the poor Ugandans might have needed the shin pads uh, sent across uh, as well. Um, the Scottish Government aims through our international development policy uh, for Scotland to be seen as a good global citizen, but a global leader uh, as well. And I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the work that Scottish charities like Glasgow the caring city do, but it's underpinned, and every member has mentioned this, by their volunteer uh, network that they have. People have a real affiliation, not just through Cathcart uh, Old Parish Church, which I've had the pleasure of going to, but much wider uh, across the city and across uh, the country as well. We have the easy job as politicians of putting the funding together, uh, making the resources available where and when we can. It's those that are on the ground in charities like Glasgow, the caring city, that actually get it done. So my, I commend them for doing that. Uh, as a government, as I say, we're determined to play our part in helping to make that happen through our own international uh, development uh, work that we do. Uh, we've committed, of course, and the result of a, a yes vote to meet that 0.7% target, but also enshrine it uh, within legislation. But whatever the result of the referendum, we're committed to helping those in the poorest parts uh, of the world. That is uh, helping women and, and, and girls into education. It's about helping those that don't have energy, uh, access to energy, uh, access to clean water, and some of the very simple and most basic challenges that nobody in the 21st century uh, should have to uh, suffer through, uh, indeed. And let me also add to what Hans Alam Alec said and put on record the Scottish Government's appreciation of all the NGOs across the country that do a phenomenal job. You mentioned the UK Foundation, Islamic Relief, uh, but also I had the pleasure of meeting Skiaf, uh, the new director uh, this morning as well, uh, but also what the work that is done by all the members of NIDOS, the Scottish Malawi Partnership, and many others uh, too. So I commend the motion uh, once again. Uh, Glasgow, the caring city, has done Glasgow proud, but it's done Scotland proud over the last 15 years. 
I look forward, of course, as is customary at a, a motion like this, that James Donner will be providing the 15th birthday cake. Uh, but I wish them every single success for more than 15 years uh, to come in the future. And again, uh, this, uh, I commend uh, the work that Reverend Neil Galbraith and his team uh, are doing. I look forward to working with them uh, closely in the future as well. Thank you. Many thanks, Minister. That concludes James Doran's debate celebrating Glasgow, the caring city, and I now suspend this meeting of Parliament until 2.30 p.m.